Hi everyone, this is Monique with VJNetwork.com and today I'm going to show you how to install SQL Server 2014 on a Windows Server 2012 R2. This particular server is hosted on VMware Workstation 11.1. So go ahead and load up your SQL Server Installation Center. Now here you can see the summary for your hardware and software requirements, security documentation, and so forth. What we're going to go ahead and do is on the left hand corner, we're going to go ahead and choose installation. And here you can see a variety of different selections. You have new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to an existing installation, new SQL Server failover cluster installation, and so forth. In this demo, we're going to go ahead and choose New SQL Server Standalone Installation or Add Features to an Existing Installation. And here you can go ahead and wait while Microsoft SQL Server 2014 set up process. So here you're going to be presented with your product key. In this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and just specify a free edition for the evaluation and choose Next. On the next screen, you're offered with the Microsoft Software License Terms. So go ahead and read through the SQL Server 2014 uh, li licensing. And once you've gone ahead and done that, you can choose I accept the license terms. I always keep the Customer Experience Improvement Program disabled. If you want to go ahead and enable it for error reporting, to improve the performance of Microsoft SQL Server 2014 if you have issues and Microsoft can go ahead and investigate. But in this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and keep both disabled. So go ahead and choose Next. Here you can check to see the rules in progress. Everything checked out OK. And here you can go ahead and choose to use Microsoft Update to check for updates recommended. I'm going to go ahead and keep this disabled. Uh, pretty much in your environment, you should be utilizing WSAS unless you have a small environment and you have the internet capacity to go out and grab up Windows updates from the Microsoft site, but usually you'll utilize a WSUS server and that WSUS server will go out to the Microsoft site and pull the updates. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this disabled and choose next. And here you can see that it's reviewing the install setup files and it's doing a rule check. And here you can see that all the rules successfully passed except for the Windows firewall, which is fine. Uh, the majority of times, if you're in an enterprise environment, you'll be utilizing a third-party antivirus software that could be anything from Symantec, McAfee, Kaspersky, Trend. Uh, maybe you are using a Microsoft Security Endpoint Protection product through SCCM. So let's go ahead and choose Next. And here you're presented with a variety of role features. You have your SQL Server feature installation, SQL Server Power Pivot for SharePoint, and all features with defaults. In this demonstration, I'm actually going to leave it as SQL Server Feature Install. And here you can see that it installs SQL Server Database Engine services, analysis services, reporting services, integration services, and other features. So let's go ahead and choose Next. And now you're presented with your feature selection. So go ahead and review all the different features you want to go ahead and implement in your environment. In this particular demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Database Engine Services, SQL Server Replication, uh, Full Text, Semantic Extractions, Data Quality Services. And then under the Shared Features, I'm going to go ahead and do Data Quality Client. Client Tools Connectivity, Integration Services, Client Tools Backwards Compatibility, Client Tools SDK, your Management Tools. With the Management Tools complete, um, SQL Client Connectivity SDK and Master Data Services. Now here you can go ahead and change the install root directory. Um, I actually recommend installing SQL Server on a, another drive, not on your OS, um, particularly maybe like a programs file drive, so maybe you have a D program file. 
files or maybe you have a SQL Server installation drive. In this demonstration I'm just going to leave it as default C but I would recommend modifying that and having it removed off of your OS system because what happens if your OS crashes? Well then you've lost your SQL Server installation or at least if you have it on a different drive um, depending on your virtual setup you can go ahead and recover that. So let's go ahead and choose next. And here you can just wait as the features are reviewed. Um, here you can see that the Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5 Service Pack 1 is required. So let's go ahead and go to our server manager and we're going to go ahead and go to manage and add roles and features. Um, here you're presented with the before you begin screen. We're going to go ahead and choose next. Uh, choose role based or feature based installation and choose next. I'm going to go ahead and choose the server name. Here I'm not adding any additional roles. I'm just going to be adding the 3.5.NET Framework feature. So we'll just go ahead and choose next. And here you can see the feature .NET Framework 3.5 was not enabled. So we'll go ahead and choose next. Enable it and just do the .NET Framework 3.5. Choose next. Um, review this. If you're prompted with this, what you'll need to do is you're going to go ahead and have to upload your ISO image for the particular install here so it can grab the actual source files for the .NET Framework 3.5. So go ahead and choose install. And here you're going to go ahead and just w wait as the installation completes. For now I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. Welcome back everyone. As you can see the .NET Framework 3.5 feature is successfully installed. So I'm going to go ahead and close the screen out and go back to my SQL install and choose rerun. So here you can see that it's successfully passed. So you can go ahead and on this next screen you're presented with the specify the name and instance ID for the SQL install. I'm going to go ahead and change this to and the instance ID automatically changes as well. So go ahead and choose next. Usually you want to go ahead and name your instance based off the work data that you're going to have on your SQL database. So maybe if you have it for a certain application, um, let's just say maybe you're utilizing a backup software and that backup software requires a SQL database, then you want to go ahead and name that database potentially after the application. So go ahead and choose next. And here you're presented with the server configuration for uh, service accounts. I would recommend creating a service account to run the SQL services. Um, maybe you want to go ahead and use a AD service account and you have particular password requirements that need to have that service account reset the password after 45 days or 60 days or so forth depending on audit requirements. Then you can at least say hey I have a service account that runs our SQL instances for security reasons and you can go ahead and implement the account name and password here. So in this particular demo I'm going to go ahead and leave everything as is and choose next. And you can also review the collation if you need to change the collation but I'm leaving that as default as well. Here you're presented with three different directories. You have your uh, server configuration, your data directories, and your file stream. Now here um, you can go ahead and choose Windows Authentication Mode or Mixed Mode. Here you can specify the SQL Service Authentication Windows Authentication. So I will utilize an SA account. And here you can also specify SQL Server Administrators. So you can add your current user. Maybe you have um, certain Active Directory groups that you want to go ahead and add as SQL Server Administrators or maybe you want to go ahead and just have certain 
particular individual users, you can go ahead and add them there. So here, um, you can select your users and groups. Now this particular server isn't part of a domain, but if you were a part of a Windows Active Directory domain, um, you can go ahead and change the location here. Uh, maybe you have multiple domains and they have trust, and you can go ahead and specify that here and look for the actual object name. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and add the uh, SQL Server Authentication and Windows Authentication. And the, the current user, which is the local administrator. Just for this demonstration, I would not recommend adding the local administrator to the um, SQL Server Administrator accounts. So on the next screen, we can go ahead and choose Data Directories. Now here, this is where we implemented the install, which I did recommend to move off of on a standalone uh, programs files drive. Here you also have your user database directory, your log directory, your temp DBs, and your backup directory. Um, in this demonstration, I will be moving them onto their own drives. It's best to keep your data and log files separate. Um, so here, uh, you can see that I have drives specified for data, logs, temp, and so forth. Here, I will also modify that to L. And for temp, we have our own standard temp drive as well. And you can also create your own folder structure. So let's just say you want to go ahead and create a folder called data. And you want to go ahead and create a folder called logs. And a temp. And a folder called backups. You can go ahead and do that as well. Here you have your file stream. I'm not going to enable file stream for this particular demonstration. So go ahead, review all of your configurations, and choose next. Here you can see a summary of all of these selections and data implementations that you use to configure your SQL install. So go ahead and review this and then choose install. And this will take several minutes to complete. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video demonstration. Welcome back. As you can see, SQL Server 2014 setup is now complete and it's successfully installed. You can go ahead and read the setup operation status here. So let's go ahead and close out the screen. Exit out of Server Manager. And go ahead and go to Start. Click the arrow and scroll over. And we'll go ahead and open SQL Server Management Studio. Give it a minute as it loads. So here you can go ahead and see the server name and the instance. And I'm going to go ahead and log in as the SA account. And here you can tell that the instance is successfully created and SQL Server has been implemented. So thank you for taking a look at my video. Please uh, take a look at my website at vjnetwork.com and my other videos that I have on YouTube. Thank you.